and the locomotive is quite happy just going across there. And one more time. A big hello to you. Welcome back to the channel. It's so great to see you. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you here to Weir Yard. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest batch of the Hellion Class 07 diesel shunter locomotives. And I really do love my small diesel shunters, but that can bring with it some operational issues of their own. And I know a lot of people are a little bit reticent about having a small shunting locomotive actually using it for shunting because dirty track, uh, poor wheel contacts and a whole host of other things can really put a crimp on the enjoyment of the model and the practicality of using it for slow speed shunting. Well, I'm also going to show you a full solder free DCC stay alive fitting on this locomotive that absolutely turns this into an unstoppable locomotive that you will find an absolute pleasure to operate. I'd like to extend a big, big thank you to Hellion who sent over this 07 shunter for review and projects on the channel. And don't forget that we've got an affiliate link down below in the description box to take you to Rails of Sheffield where you can pick up your own version of this locomotive from the current batch. But uh, come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts with the full range available to browse at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Call them now. For the very best price, check them out today at the link below. Well, I'm really excited to show you this review and a little added extra project with the Stay Alive fitting. I know it's an area that I do get asked about uh, quite a bit and there are some great Stay Alives on the market. But this particular one I've gone for solder free because I know that that is like voodoo witchcraft to some people. The idea of sticking bits of metal together with other bits of molten metal. So we're really doing a nice little project today where you don't have to use a soldering iron at all. So come with me and let's take a look at the Hellion Class 07 shunter and see how we can transform it into the most reliable runner in your fleet. <laughs> When it comes to the subject of stay alives, there are some people out there, and I've seen this time and time again on the internet, who claim that, well, if you only lay your track properly, make sure all your droppers are in place, and uh, you make sure that your locomotives are serviced properly, then you shouldn't need stay alives. And I find this quite a pious position. And I would always say to these people, how is that working out for you genuinely? Because even with the best will in the world, it's often almost impossible to get a locomotive running at very low speeds over all areas of point work, especially if it's a, a short wheelbase locomotive, if it doesn't have a stay alive in it. And certainly I've always felt far more confident, especially with short, small shunting layouts, to have a stay alive fitted in the locomotive. And I'd like to thank Hellion for sending over to the channel one of their new class 07 shunters in the guise of 07013. And this is catalog number 2919. We do have an affiliate link down below for you to find this and all of the other class seven shunters. And certainly these are an exceptional model, but with its short wheelbase, certainly shorter than a class 08 shunter, these are exactly the sort of models that a stay alive is perfect for. 
Now, some people do get a little bit frightened. They don't like the idea of soldering. And uh, it's almost like it's some kind of voodoo black art. And as soon as you say, yes, you just solder this here, you can almost see the screens come down. They just don't want to know. And uh, before you know it, um, they've, they've just given up on the idea. So today, what I'm going to do with the aid of this Hellion locomotive is show you just how easy it is to fit a stay alive to pretty much any locomotive. Now the Hellion Class 07 is a locomotive that um, is pretty small. I mean in the grand scheme of things this is smaller than uh, an 08 shunter and you can see that quite a short tight six wheel wheelbase and what you tend to find with a short wheelbase locomotive is when they're running through point work that's when they're most vulnerable to losing contact. Uh, you can just have a small section of the point maybe that's not getting full power for whatever reason. You can have the locomotive tip up with slightly uneven track and you end up that the locomotive effectively uh, starts to balance on three wheels um, just by nature of twists and turns in the track and that's when you get problems. Now, um, one of the things that you will see as well is even if a locomotive makes it through a section, if you um, give it a little bit of extra power, the lights uh, can quite often flicker and no more so than if you fit sound when the sound can just die away completely uh, and then you know that there is a power issue. To give a little history on the Class 07 shunters, these were built for British Railways by Ruston and Hornsby and were designed exclusively for use within Southampton docks. They were a direct dieselisation replacement for the USA dock tanks, which in turn had replaced the B4 dock tanks. 14 of these locomotives were ordered and the principal reason that BR chose to go for a bespoke design rather than utilising the 08 diesel shunter was simply that the locomotives needed to have a shorter wheelbase in order to negotiate areas within Southampton docks where the curves were too tight to accommodate some of the larger diesel shunter types. The locomotives were incredibly successful and actually lasted until the end of rail operations at Southampton Docks. The locomotives were delivered in BR Green and later on received Corporate Rail Blue, firstly with their pre-tops numbers and then later on having their tops numbers applied. Several of the locomotives were withdrawn before application of the TOPS numbers and the surviving members received their TOPS numbers with gaps left in the number series for those that had already been withdrawn. And these included what would have become 07008 and 07014, although whilst 07007 was withdrawn and never carried its TOPS number during BR ownership, it was transferred to Eastleigh where it was used as the works shunter and later on in privatisation has received its 07007 number. A lot of the locomotives were sold on into industry. And there were a number of users that found these cheap but reliable diesel shunters particularly useful, including Powell Dufferin at their coal concentration yard in South Wales, where three members of the class ended up, of which at least one has passed on into preservation. British Industrial Sand were also a user of a member of this class at the Oakmore Sand Quarry, and a number of other examples passed through ICI use and at least one was exported overseas to Italy. Surviving long enough to garner interest from preservation lists, a number of these locomotives have survived into preservation and can be found up and down the country. Initially intended to also work trip freights away from the docks, it was found on delivery of the first examples that the bearings suffered overheating at sustained high speed running at around 20 miles an hour. And this ruled out their use in this practice and indeed meant that subsequent examples were delivered by road and certainly when they went for heavy overhaul, they were roaded away to Eastleigh rather than being sent by rail, which at the time was customary for other classes of diesel shunter. 
Hellion have released the model over several production runs, this particular example being drawn from the most recent release of the model, and it is available in original BR Green, its later Rail Blue with pre-tops number, a number of different private owner industrial liveries, as well as the Tops Rail Blue as seen on this example. Hellion have also tooled up for both the V1 and V2 examples. This is the V2 version and features additional cabinets and pipe work which some members of the class were rebuilt with to cater for running with air brake stock. Although not all members of the class were so treated and current survivors include examples from both the V1 and V2 variety. The Hellion model allows for these different versions and it's really, really quite pleasing to see that they have catered for the detailed differences in amongst this actually quite diminutive and specialised class of locomotives. Other variants that Hellion have produced include the white roof and the blue roof version on the rail blue examples. And all models come with fully detailed buffer beam with everything factory fitted. In the box you'll also find spares for all this pipework and some plug-in adapters if you don't wish to use the tension lock style coupling at one or both ends. The model also comes with tension lock couplings that fit into a NEM pocket within the slot in the buffer beam. On this example I've chosen to fit the blanking plate at one end so that I can enjoy the full array of buffer beam detail and at the other I will be fitting the coupling. Buffers are sprung all round and it's fitted with an incredibly smooth running motor that with the addition of the stay alive that we're going to be fitting in this video makes for an incredibly reliable smooth running locomotive that is an absolute joy to use. So thanks to Hellion, I'm going to be able to show you exactly how with a locomotive as small as this, with a body that's actually full of chassis, we can fit unobtrusively a uh, decoder and stay alive. And these that I've chosen are from the DCC Concept Zen range. And these have a, a little party trick up their sleeve. And the decoders, if I get this one out, we don't need any of these extra leads. These are just for if you're going to be fitting this into different types of locomotives. You can see that the decoder comes with the, uh, the regular six pins that plug to the six pin socket in the locomotive and the Zen range all have these three wire fly leads that end in a small micro plug. And this is for the stay alive. And if you're really scared about the idea of soldering, you're worried that you might ruin the decoder or the stay alive and maybe not quite get it right. For whatever reason, I know a lot of people are a little bit scared of soldering and this is the perfect way that we can address that. Now, I've also gone for one of the plug and play stay alives. These recently won an award, uh, I think a couple of years ago, for innovation of the year. And it's why I have chosen these to show you just how easy they are to fit to a locomotive. We get the control board and then on a plug-in fly lead, we get the stay alive. And these are available in a number of different sizes. In fact, if we look at the front of the box, you can buy them either as single packs or triple packs and we've got the small, medium, large and the supersized stay alive. This is actually the large. It's got four of these high power capacitors on it. And because these plugs only plug in one way round, there's no real risk of getting it wrong. We've also got two pin connector on one end of the control board and a three pin connector on the other. And that means you can't even get these plugged into the control board the wrong way round. So what I'm going to do is plug that in there and then the decoder plugs in at the other side. So you've got this daisy chain that gives us the decoder, control board and the capacitors of the stay alive. Now how are we going to fit all of that into this? Now what you tend to find, especially with smaller shunting locomotives, space is very much at a premium. 
But actually, having the control board separate from the capacitors on these and the different sizes of capacitors ranging from a single one of these right through to a large six capacitor set, which is the super size, it's actually quite easy to mix and match and get these into the locomotive. Now, the Hellion class 07 is really really easy to get inside now i know a lot of people as well do get quite frightened of going inside locomotives to dcc fit but really this is very very accessible so first up we're going to pull off the cab and this it just slides in push fit make sure that you get it the right way around the doors go towards the back and you can see up inside there, we've got plenty of room. If you wanted to go for a sound installation, then actually a very small speaker glued carefully in, facing down onto the cab roof is a great place to start. And I'm going to show you that when we fit in the Stay Alive, we're not going to have a lot of ugly electronics um, prominently visible. We are still going to be able to hide them inside the chassis of this locomotive. To dismantle it further, we're going to need the small jeweler's crosshead type screwdriver. And on the Hellion 07, just looking for two screws there and there. And this is to take the front bonnet off, and that's where we're going to find the decoder socket. Really, really simple. That's one. And that's two. I'm going to put the locomotive down on the ground. And then I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers. The reason for this is that we also have a little bit of plug-in detail on the front. So we're just going to wiggle all of this free. Now it is a little bit of a tight fit. And just going to make sure that we can pull out and we also want to disconnect the high level air pipes now the v1 version doesn't have these so no need to worry uh, it's actually a lot easier on the v1 version so just carefully unhitch all of that Put that to one side and then inside you can see that there's a lot of chassis block. And what I'm going to do is just use a sharp scalpel blade just to very carefully score on the edge of this tape that's just holding the blanking plate down. Carefully peel that back. Keep the scalpel blade away from the wires just so that you don't nick any of these. Just put that to one side. And then I'm going to choose a very, very small flathead screwdriver from my jeweler screwdriver set and just very carefully tease up the blanking plate and just detach the wires like so. And then we can just carefully pull out the blanking plate. Next step is to get our decoder. Line that up and just carefully push that all the way home. So the best thing that we can do now at this stage is I've detached the stay alive and I'm just going to test and make sure that all is well, that the decoder is the right way up before we move on to the next stage. Because the last thing you want is to get the body back on and then discover that you've done something like get the decoder upside down. So I'm just going to test this quickly. And all that is now tested and working. So we're quite happy to proceed. I'm just going to very carefully slide this forward. I'm just getting the circuit board a little bit further along in the bonnet. Don't force it, you might just have to unfurl some of these wires just a little bit to give you the extra space. And then once we've got that to where we need it, again, I'm just going to cut through this little bit of tape here. And this little channel here 
is where we're going to run the wire for the stay alive. And just to make sure that we've not got any stresses going on, I'm going to feed the stay alive tail in underneath. Pull that through all the way to the front. Get it down. And those wires just match up nicely. It's just neaten off the red wire. Get it to where it should be. And we feed these wires into that groove. And the reason for this is it just makes sure that the body of the locomotive sits nice and flat. We can then carefully tidy up the rest of those wires Put the tape back and if you need any extra tape then I'm going to be using this Captain tape from DCC Concepts as well and this is super thin so all we need to do with this is cut a short length and just use this to tidy off the wiring and the tape's so thin that it's not going to restrict putting the body back on. Now for now we're just going to uh, ignore this tail that we're going to fit in when we come to put the cab back on and what i'm going to do now is just get the cab back in situ make sure that the railings line up with the holes they're just a push fit the bonnet should go down all the way and i'm just going to clip the high level air pipes back into place. Turn the model over, jeweler's screwdriver, and don't over tighten these. Just enough to hold everything into place. It is a kind of push fit. It's tight, but not excessively tight. And you can see there the decoder is in place. If you're just wanting the straight DCC fit, then actually you could stop at this point and you wouldn't even need the fly lead. But adding the stay alive really does make a massive difference. So what we're going to be looking to do now, I'm going to feed these wires down the channel and then we're just wanting to make sure that they don't foul on the worm gear. They're just going to go down to what will be the cab floor. So we turn our attention now to the cab and what we're going to need to do is just cut a small notch into this. Again, it's not going to be noticeable. And I'm going to see, first of all, if I can just very carefully with a very sharp scalpel blade, just carefully cut out enough of a recess that those wires can come through. It's all we're interested in. Enough of a recess that those wires will quite happily come through here without forcing the cab to sit proud. And with a really sharp scalpel blade, it's quite easy just to carve a little bit of a channel. Don't try and take off too much at once. Repeatedly just a little bit. Mind your fingers as well. If you stab yourself with this, you will know about it. And you can see there very, very quickly and easily. Just clean that off. I've got a little bit of a recess. And if I just line those up, they're going to sit into that recess and not cause the cab to sit proud on the floor. Now, the next thing I want to do is to fit the stay alive in place into the cab. And I've chosen this particular size because actually it slide fits up into here quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very carefully work out where to slide this in so that we're as unobtrusive as possible. If you're worried about the top of the capacitors being just visible, they are a dark color, so they're not massively visible, but you can always go for the next size down, which is just two of these capacitors. It won't give you quite as long a running on uh, a particular charge, 
but certainly it will iron out any of the imperfections in your track. And we're gonna just very carefully work this in. And then what we'll be doing is plugging in the fly lead for the decoder, make sure that's all in place. Just need to lose a little bit of this wire, so twist it for neatness. You can put that up there like that. If you're worried about the wire uncoiling again, just a little bit of the captain tape and for neatness. Let's just make sure that that stays put. So we've got those wires secured just so they don't coil up into the roof. And then the next thing I want to do is just try and make sure that the capacitors don't ride up into the roof. And what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of the captain tape. I'm just going to stick that on the side. And then just very carefully slide that where I want it thereabouts and then I want to just tape it to the cab now with this the captain tape needs to avoid being on anything that's painted blue because otherwise you'll see that on the outside once the cab is refitted so that will hopefully just hold that right where we need it I'm going to feed the control board in just gently gently if you want to help disguise any of this now would be a good time to also consider fitting a crew there are no independent cab lights on this model so it doesn't really become too visible and then once we line up the cab what we need to do now is just make sure that those wires fit into that groove that we cut. So I'm just going to move those to one side there. And then we've got black, white and blue. Line them up with where we just put that groove. And then slowly ease the cab down into place and you'll feel it click. And there we are, we've got the cab down and the Stay Alive itself is not too obtrusive in the cab. If you added a uh, driver figure just on the side that would help hide it. You can also put a little dab of matte black paint on the wires. But certainly that is a much less obtrusive Stay Alive install than you might get with uh, an open back cab where everything is just on display. And there you have it. It was a very quick and easy install. There's no soldering needed whatsoever. And we've got that stay alive into the cab, plug and play really, really easily. If you change your mind about either the size of the capacitors that you want to use, or maybe decide that you want to move these on to another locomotive, then it's really easy to do with that plug and play interface. And I'm going to show you now just how slow this locomotive will crawl on Weir Yard. I've got it on the track and I've given it about two, three seconds just to allow that stay alive capacitor to charge up. Now with the DCC handset, I'm going to give it the absolute minimum. And immediately it heads off. I'm just going to let it crawl over the point. Now this is an electrofrog point, but the point blades are the area where you may find a little bit of an issue. And as you can see, still crawling on the slowest possible setting, the locomotive has no issues whatsoever. Changing the direction, And the locomotive responds perfectly. I'm going to give it a little bit more and then I'm going to pick the locomotive up and you can see just how much additional power the locomotive has to get it over dead spots on the track. Placing it back down on the track and away the locomotive goes. 
For the next demonstration, I'm going to show you exactly what happens when we take it to the extreme. And this is as dirty as track could possibly be. I'm just going to put a piece of masking tape over the track. And as you can see, I can put a screwdriver between the rails and there is no short on the system. So I am going to get the locomotive running, give it a fair turn of speed. And as you can see, the locomotive actually makes it all the way across the masking tape. And you just wouldn't have a dead spot on your layout that big. And certainly if your track is that dirty, then really uh, a track cleaning rubber is probably the way to go. And the locomotive is quite happy just going across there. And one more time. and straight back onto the power. You can see that the difference that a Stay Alive makes, you can run a locomotive down to an absolute crawl and it really just isn't bothered. You can run it with absolute confidence across your track work. And if I move it onto a different track here and move it incredibly slowly across the insole frog point, there is still no judder whatsoever. It just keeps going. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that video with a review of the Class 07 Shunter locomotive. And I have to say that the 07 is one of my favorite classes of diesel shunter. And we made it something special with the addition of that solder free, just plug a stay alive system from DCC Concepts. And we got a link down below as well to help you find not just the Class 07 shunter, but also where we're going to point you in the direction of where those DCC concepts just plug in stay alives are as well. And uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Have you used this range of stay alives? Or indeed, have you got thoughts on the 07 shunters from Hellion? I would love to hear from you and also hear your experiences as well. Don't forget too that the Monday Club Wagon is still available to order, that William Loudon Sons Pal Brick, and this will be another high quality commission following hot on the heels of last year's special wagon commission, which completely sold out to pre-order. Now, uh, these are selling incredibly well, so if you want one, do check them out at the link down below and order them with confidence through Rails of Sheffield. Please tickle the like button, share the video, and subscribe subscribe to to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up but until next time this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself happy modeling bye for now today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections. No collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, 
Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papere, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.